In our last episode, we met with a friend of Nick Valentine whose daughter had gone missing. We discovered that she took a boat and sailed it north to the town of Far Harbor. We arrived at Far Harbor in our own boat only to find the people of Far Harbor under attack by the fauna of the island. After defending the town, Captain Avery, the leader of the people here at Far Harbor, told us that we could find Kasumi, the missing daughter, at a place called Acadia. But she had never been there, and so she recommended we follow a local guide here at Far Harbor named Old Longfellow, who might be able to take us to Acadia. However, the town is in dire straits. They're under constant attack by creatures from the fog and need all the help they can get. We'll head to Acadia to find Kasumi soon, but first, let's help the people of Far Harbor. The town of Far Harbor was actually once known as Bar Harbor before the war. The big sign that we saw upon arrival explains why the town is now called Far Harbor. The B in Bar Harbor had eroded over the past 200 years and now resembles an F, but we see the original name of the town elsewhere in the town and on the island. Captain Avery's home was once Bar Harbor Gifts, a souvenir shop, and heading upstairs we see Captain Avery asleep in bed, but on her desk hiding beneath a clipboard we find a note. Old letter. Olympia. Ma passed last year and I'm running the homestead. I really could use your help. I don't know how Ma did it alone all those years. Fog's getting closer to the gates day by day. This keeps up and I don't know what I'll do. Please, just come home. Your family needs you. Danny. A letter from Danny to Olympia asking Olympia to come home? We don't understand the context of this note just yet. And why is it on Captain Avery's desk? To find out, perhaps we need to help these people to learn more about what's going on here at Far Harbor. Waking Captain Avery up. I hope the harbor's being good to you. At this point, I'd settle if folks were just plain civil. What's there to do in town? Brooks sells general goods. Teddy writes in back of his shop, and he can patch you up if you need it. Besides that, the last plank's a popular stop for booze and what have you. And lastly, well... If you need a gun, see Alan Lee. You know of anyone could use some help? It's never easy to ask anyone on this island for help, much less a stranger. But I've got a responsibility to these people, and I have a job for you if you're up for it. Besides, I know you're tougher than you look. What exactly do you need help with? We get our drinking water from a purifier not far outside of town. We had a bad storm not long before you got here, and it must have damaged the fog condensers that protect the road to the purifier. I sent Howard Dunbar out to fix them. He was out there when the Meyer Lurks hit us, and I'm, I'm afraid they might have got him, too. I was hoping you might go have a look. If the worst happened, maybe you could get those fog condensers back online. If you're up to it, just head south out of town. It's paying work, of course. I wouldn't ask a stranger to stick their neck out on our behalf unless I was willing to pay a fair share for it. What exactly are these fog condensers? How do they work? Well, I'm no engineer, but the way it was explained to me, each fog condenser pulls in the air around it and then condenses it into liquid. The point being, the fog doesn't get past them. They make a barrier that protects the town. No fog means that all the nasty things living in it stay in it. They don't venture out too often. The fog's their home, I guess. The fog condensers eat up a lot of power, but we've got a wind farm that takes care of that. As long as the turbines stay charged, we stay safe. Am I going to need any tools or parts if I have to make these repairs on my own? The fog condensers need their power modules replaced, but Howard took the only spares we had. Either way, you're going to have to find him first. I'm not making any promises. I'm not a mechanic. It's not a complicated repair. Just installing some replacement components. Believe me, if Howard can do it, anyone can. All that I ask is that you hurry. I don't have to tell you how important our water supply is. All right. I'll head out there now. Good. Our water supply won't last much longer. With that, we begin the quest Safe Passage. Search for Howard Dunbar. 
Well, Avery told us that he went deeper into the ruins of Far Harbor to fix the fog condensers. That's where we'll start looking for him. Today, the town of Far Harbor is just on the docks, but in pre-war times, the town of Bar Harbor was a sprawling place. Here, we find an entire town's worth of ruins. Most of them are empty. We find a few containers here or there. There is a church in the middle of the ruin, and on the top floor of the church, we find an advanced locked box safe. If we move southwest from the church and pass between two buildings, we find Meyer Lurks standing over a corpse. It's the corpse of Howard Dunbar. Looks like Howard didn't make it. I'll have to repair the fog condensers myself. We see that he's still carrying all three fog condenser components on his inventory. Looks like he didn't get a chance to fix any of them. Thankfully, the first one is right next to the house behind which Howard died. Approaching it with the fog condenser component in our inventory, we can repair the fog condenser. Once repaired, the fog condensers condense the nearby fog into a liquid, which it then drains out a pipe to the ground below. We can loot this liquid, which appears in our inventory as condensed fog. Condensed fog can be broken down in our workshop into oil and steel. It's also a recipe component used in a number of recipes that are new to Far Harbor. After obtaining the Recipe Roundup Islanders Almanac magazine, which we find at the National Park Visitor Center, which I'll cover in a bit. We find the next fog condenser by following the road southwest from the first. In the woods behind it, we see the turbines spinning in the wind, generating the electricity that powers the fog condensers. Approaching it, we can repair it just like the last one. Then, if we follow the road south-southeast from this fog condenser, we find the final one on the side of the road next to a lake filled with water purifiers. This must be the freshwater source for Far Harbor. When ready, we can repair the final fog condenser and hope upon hope that nothing nasty will leap out of this water to attack us. Crossing fingers. With all three fog condensers repaired, we can head back to Far Harbor. Along the way, we find a bus with a skeleton inside. Looks like she was carrying tomatoes when the bombs dropped. It's morning when we arrive back at town, and we find Captain Avery behind the gift shop counter. Those fog condensers are back online. Good. Our water supply was starting to get low. Wasn't sure how much longer we could hold out. Did you find Howard? He died trying to get those condensers fixed. The man is a hero. Yes. Yes, he is. I'll make sure we remember him as such. He's Mirelark food. I should never have let him go out there alone. Well, I said it was paying work. 200 caps should be enough. That's it. What a waste of time. We're not rich here. It was hard enough scraping that much together. Captain, nobody's gonna want to help you out unless you're prepared to pay a fair wage. Well, I can't argue with that. I suppose I could spare a little more. I can give you 250 caps. Keeping everyone supplied with water is worth a lot more than that. You drive a hard bargain, Mainlander. I'll give you 300 caps. Howard Dunbar died trying to get this job done. His life was sure as hell worth more than that, and so is mine. You're squeezing blood from a stone, stranger. I can give you 400, but not a cap more. Is there anything else I can do to help? Don't know if you've chatted up the Mariner, but she's always looking for help. I know Cassie Dalton was asking around, but, uh, well, judge for yourself there. What's the history of this place? Well, this whole dock used to belong to the Mariner when the fog started getting thicker. Family by family, homestead by homestead, people were kicked out of their homes inland. The Mariner was kind enough to let people stay. The harbor just kind of grew out of that charity. Thanks. Glad I could help you out. That makes two of us. Now, here's your pay. I've got to start making arrangements for Howard. So I'll say goodbye. With that, we complete the quest safe passage. But there are still many more people in the town whom we can help. Turning around, we find a power armor workbench in a nook between two shacks. I'll be sure to make good use of this during my stay. 
The shack just west of the power armor workbench, right next to the gate, belongs to the Mariner. As we head in to talk with her, she races out. She moves into the gun shop, which we see is manned by none other than Alan Lee. The hole needs mending. You know, it just don't build itself. I need proper wood, steel, nails, the like. Nobody asked you to cobble together that stupid wall. You want yourself HM's commodities, and you know how to get them. Caps. That stupid wall is you the ain't only on. thing you that kept you stowaways world. alive. Buy my guns that now. And the mainlander. Mainlander? Huh. <laughs> what kept us safe was harbormen and the firepower I sold them. Want supplies? Tell you what. Apply that big old brain of yours to dealing with the real threat. Those children of Adam whack jobs. Haven't you fouled Food. up things enough, Stim Alan? Packs. And Fully now you stuffed. mean to make it worse? They're still alive, aren't they? Figure I got a whole lot more work to do. No deal. But this isn't the last of it. Sure the hell looks like it to me. Wow. Not even the residents of Far Harbor are willing to help the Mariner defend their own town? What sort of insanity is this? After the Mariner tinkers with a weapons workbench, she heads back to her home, and here we can have a chat. Mariner, the hull took a battery. To be sure. But she wouldn't be standing at all if it weren't for you. They call me the Mariner. Shipwright. Handyman. And the only one keeping the harbor afloat. Well, beside Captain Avery. Pleasure to meet you. Likewise. I hope the island doesn't kill you quick. Or slow, for that matter. Why doesn't anyone help you? Each harborman is the captain of his own ship. Worked fine for generations on the homesteads. Your land, your rules. But when the island pushed them onto my dock, one by one, the ungrateful bastards expect me to look after my land, even though they're squatting on it like wretches. If it's that bad, why put up with it? I couldn't very well toss them back into the fog, could I? Bad luck, that. Surely their spirits would haunt me to my grave. And that's a fact. The town's lucky you're here. You blowing smoke up my sails. Huh. <laughs> For helping you out, I expect some... appreciation. In the form of caps. You and me both. Been saving these whelps for ages without even a word of thanks. <sighs> I don't suppose you'd be willing to lend a hand. In order to do proper repairs, I need tools. Specialized tools. And they won't be easy to come by. 450 caps if you can, though. You've kept the walls together this long. Why do you need special tools now? I want to build the hull up proper. Make it strong. And keep those blasted crabs out. For good. I'll take a pass. If the bleeding harborman won't lift a finger. Too much to hope a mainlander would. Fair journeys to you, though. So, I'd be risking my life for only 450 caps? <sighs> I'm a bit short on caps, but I have old Jimmy's shotgun I can give you. Heavens no, he can't use it anymore. Sign me up. I'll help. Eagle's Cove Tannery. Tools are certain to be there. Now get. So the Mariner needs tools to fix up the hull, and the tools she needs are at Eagle's Cove Tannery. She marked it on our Pip-Boy map. Taking a look at the map, we see that it's on the opposite side of the island. But still on the northern side of the island, shouldn't be that long of a trek. Along the way, we fight gulpers. We stumble upon a ruined Red Rocket truck stop where a feral ghoul is sleeping. Beneath him, we find an advanced locked floor safe with an assortment of goodies inside. And just outside the Eagle's Cove Tannery, we find a Pulowski Preservation Shelter with a shutter bug inside. Pulowski, nuclear protection on a budget. Heading towards the tannery, we see the remains of a cafe. We don't find much here until we move towards the kitchen. Here we find a first aid kit with a stim pack and some purified water. On the dock where they had outdoor seating, we find another shack. Get them before they hop on up. We see that this was a bathroom and washroom, but all we find is one stim pack beneath a radio. Moving southwest, we find the tannery itself. 
Looks like this place is swarming with ghouls. Before we head inside, let's clear its exterior. Moving up the steps, we find a platform where the tannery was storing a bunch of supplies. Damn, we got nothing. On this western side, we see that the tannery was loading up ships with crates of their goods. Most of these crates have tumbled to the ground below. Back on the platform, we open an eastern door. We see a staircase going down into the tannery to the north. We open up another eastern door to find more ghouls. You're in for it! Anyone you walk away from. Here they were packaging some of their hides. We see a bunch of hides on a conveyor belt and more ghouls in the loft. Your funeral. Those look clear. At the top of the loft, we find two wooden crates filled with goods and we find the packaging office at the southern end of the loft. On the desk inside, we find a cap stash, and behind the desk in the corner, we find an expert locked box safe with ammunition, chems, and money inside. That's it for the exterior. We can go back outside and walk through the front door. We arrive in an L-shaped area with a door right in front of us. This door apparently leads to an office, but it's locked with an advanced lock. After picking it, I thought we were getting along. With these ghouls dead, we can head inside the office. We see that despite the door being locked, someone has been here. There's a box safe already open. Lying on the ground inside, we find some leather and pre-war money. We find a combat shotgun lying on top of the safe, but next to it, we find a still intact expert locked box safe with an assortment of ammunition and money inside. After looting some bottle caps from the desk, we can head out of the office and continue north to kill more ghouls. Break a sweat. Not that it's an option. Nasty cannibals. Very good. We arrive in a large room filled with machinery. We see drying racks standing here with hides that have been drying for 200 years. Behind them, we find the skeletal remains of one of the workers. He died having lunch, snacking on a sweet roll. We see a ramp going down and some stairs going up to a loft level. Going upstairs first, all we find are a bunch of consoles at the end. In some bins beneath them, we find a number of electronic components. This leaves one path left to go. Heading back to the main floor, we can take the ramp down to the basement. Passing the skeleton of a worker along the way, we arrive in a large storage room filled with crates and barrels. And hiding behind one of the shelves, as a glowing one. And I'm out of energy cells. Great. Looks like Far Harbor's gonna consume all my ammunition. The glowing one was at one time a worker here at the tannery, for on his body we find the tannery key. On one of the eastern shelves, we find a cooler with corn inside. On a northwestern shelf, we find a first aid kit with 10 millimeter ammunition and a number of chems inside. And heading south between the shelves, at the very end, we find the power tools in a duffel bag lying on the ground. Near to this, we find an end of dungeon steamer trunk filled with an assortment of goodies. And lying on the ground next to it is a factory worker still taking notes with a ballpoint pen. Moving out from between these two shelves, we can go around them to find a locked door that we can unlock with the tannery key. Heading outside, we find ourselves on the other side of that door at the bottom of the staircase. But just as we're about to leave... Hold up! I've been casing those ghouls for weeks, waiting for an opening. And you dive in and choppy chop, bang, bang, and the whole lot of them dead. You even know what you got right there? 
a premium set of Palman's power tools. What's the big deal about these tools? Palman's pumps out more foot pounds of torque than a death claw on Psycho. And before Polly ran off, he kept those tools shiny. Nothing like them on this island. Period. I remember commercials for Pelman's tools. Expensive stuff, but top of the line. What the hell's a commercial? Wait, it don't matter. I really don't care what these are. Wait, so you're not salvaging them? With the shape of the world right now, tools like this are useful. Exactly. You got it. Wait. Oh, Mariner sent you, didn't she? Goddamn Mitch and his big mouth. No matter what she's offering, it's nothing. Serious builders would give an arm for them tools. I'll pay you 2,000 caps right here, right now. Deal? Why do you need the tools so much? I got my own special projects. For the caps I'm paying, that's all you need to know. Tools in condition like this, they're positively unique. Maybe I should auction them off someplace. Mm. $2,750. Say yes now, before I change my mind. We have a deal. Here you go, just like we promised. Ha! I got myself some Pelmans. With that, Machete Mike walks off with his Pelman tools. We complete the quest hull breach, but we fail the optional part of the quest, which was to help the Mariner. If we choose to sell the tools to Machete Mike, and then head back to talk with the Mariner... Mariner, you been to the tannery? You find my tools yet? Can you tell me about the tannery? A man named Polly used to camp there. Very handy fellow. Fog rolled in a year back, and he had to pull up his stake. He left the harbor recently, so everything that's there is fair salvage. I'm not gonna keep looking for your tools. The tannery's full of dangers, no doubt. Might be this is for the best. Keep an eye out on the horizon, Mainlander. Those tools were worth a fortune, and you were trying to rip me off. Ugh. Machete Mike got to you, did he? Some things are worth more than cats. Protection for friends and family. A bit of respect. Not like a cat like you would understand. Leave me. I sold those tools to Machete Mike. That silver-tongued devil. We had a deal. Well, it's good to know your worth. Leave. Hey, a mariner. I want nothing to do with you. She refuses to talk with us ever again. The only way we can walk away with the tools is if we refuse to sell them to Machete Mike. Even after selling them to Machete Mike, if we decide to pickpocket him, we don't find them on his inventory. Even after killing him, we don't find them on his inventory. Our only option to help the Mariner is to refuse to sell the tools. I'll pass on the offer. I ain't hanging around forever. Walk away from this, and you'll regret it. And he is not a raider. He doesn't turn violent. He simply walks away. Now, at this point, we know he's carrying a lot of cash on him to pay for these tools. And if we are feeling like thieves, we can try to pickpocket him and steal the cash. Or if we're just a filthy murderer, we can kill him for the cash. But if we are a decent human being, we can leave Machete Mike alone and head back to the Mariner. With the tools in hand, we can tell the Mariner that we were successful. Mariner, you been to the tannery? You find my tools yet? Here are your tools. A fair bit of luck running into you. Here's your reward. Well earned. And now to work in the hull. With that, we complete the quest hull breach and the Mariner walks off. If we pass the speech check to convince her to give us old Jimmy's shotgun when we accepted the quest, she just rewards us with a non-legendary combat shotgun. I got a ported advanced combat shotgun. But just then, a man races forward to talk with us. My you are a curious specimen. Despite our friendly town doing its best to chase you out, you keep helping us ingrates all the same. I got to ask, why do you keep at it? Does it really matter? I suppose not. I help mainly for the caps. Huh? What was that? Oh, <laughs> caps, huh? Make some money and help at the same time. Respect. You're good people in some dire straits. Figured you could use a hand. Huh? <laughs> you running for office? Well, if that's the truth, we don't deserve you. I think I'm done helping you guys. Well, hold on now. There's reasons for people's color. Most folk here are set in their ways, yes? 
It makes no difference how hard you try to get in good with them. Heck, it took my family three generations before the Daltons would sell us a heel of bread. But there's a way. A downright insane way, mind you. You can turn even the most stubborn fool around. Why are some harbor men so hostile to outsiders? Most of the folk on this rock believe they've been given the God-given right to walk here. Way I figure it, if you got the moxie to survive, you earned your place. I'm not interested. Prudent. But if you change your mind, the harbor needs you, even if they're too stupid to realize it. I'd love to change their opinion of me. Do it right, and all mainlanders might get treated better. I'll hear you out. In olden times, leaders were chosen by something called the Captain's Dance. Legends say the toughest, meanest, and outright craziest hopefuls would chum the waters and lure out the worst the island could throw at them. Once the would-be captain killed the Myrler Queen, or Fog Crawler, or what have you, they'd invite the whole island to feast off the bounty. You do this? Well, you won't be made captain, but you'll earn respect. Everyone's respect. So if we throw this dance, it'll really change their minds. The dance hasn't been done in living memory. Some people think their tradition is dead, but its history is soaked deep in this island. You do it, and it'll turn heads for certain. Why are you helping me? My job is to heal people, and not just from the physical type of injuries. The island's in trouble like it's never been, and you might, just might, be the medicine we desperately need. I'm not sure about this. Well, I'd think you were a fool if you were, but if you want to do it... I'm ready to become a legend then. You what? <laughs> you crack me up. There's an old Mire Lurk feasting grounds by Emmett's Causeway, a treacherous stretch along the coast. Go there and throw any kind of meat you got into the water. All that blood and viscera will be sure to attract attention. And then wait. I'll make sure there's a witness or two. Prove to the rest of these clods you belong. And with that, we begin the quest, Rite of Passage, Drop Meat in the Water. So Teddy, the town doctor, wants us to ingratiate ourselves with the people of Far Harbor by completing the Captain's Dance. Okay, if that's what it takes, I guess it's time to dance. Now the location where he told us to dance is pretty far away, on the opposite side of the island, far southwest from Eagles Cove Tannery. We see a number of interesting sights along the way. In one ruin, I found a skeleton surrounded by glowing fungus clutching a garden gnome. Near to this, we find another garden gnome standing on the ground clutching a saw, removing a skull from a skeleton. There are more bones on the ground nearby, and a third skeleton clutching yet another garden gnome. Oh, these horrible garden gnomes. I think it's about time we move away from here. What were we doing? Oh, right, the captain's dance. After a long walk in the dead of night through thick fog, we finally arrive at Emmett's Causeway and the Mirelurk feasting grounds. And here we find a man crouching down amongst the grass. Hey. So the doc asked me to witness. So I'm witnessing. Dottie is here to witness us complete the captain's dance. All right, so what did we need to do? We needed to throw meat into the water. Looks like any old meat'll do. We'll start by dropping some gulper innards into the water. And as soon as we do... Is that it? Just one mire lurk? Oh no. I don't think we're alone. Damn. Now. With that, we complete wave one of the captain's dance. And on this guy, I found a freezing automatic plasma rifle. Hey, think I might want to take this for a spin. To complete phase two, we need to go to the next location and drop yet more meat into the water. After getting rid of some more gulper innards. There he is. What's that?
Okay, well, it looked like an interesting weapon, but uh, I think it's making this fight a bit harder. Are we done here? Nope, not done. It's a legendary Marler Queen. Okay, out of ammo for this sucker. Back to the Overseer's Guardian. Damn. That's better. Whew. With that, we complete the Captain's Dance. On the legendary Meyer Alert Queen, I found a violent automatic combat rifle. Pretty cool. Think I'll stick with my Overseer's Guardian for now. Nearby, we find a capsized rowboat with a number of skeletons inside, one of which is clutching an ammo canister. Dottie, however, is nowhere to be found. Guess he hightailed it back to Far Harbor. But was it before or after we completed the captain's dance? Is he gonna vouch for us, or did we do this all for nothing? Heading back to Far Harbor, we find Doc Teddy and a number of the Far Harbor men gathered outside the last plank. Everyone! Everyone, times are hard, but this here front. feast is proof that we can turn things Beach. around. Now I know mainlanders have been responsible for all manner of harm, but this one is special. This one did the captain's dance. It's true. I saw it. So in my book, she's not a mainlander anymore. Beach she's one of us. Yeah! Mainlander. Ha <laughs> ha. Hey, Doc. If these knuckleheads don't trust you now, well, fuck them, right? I expect folk will be more talkative now. Might even have some more work for you. Maybe hit up Mitch at the last plant. You need anything else, Teddy? <laughs> you just don't quit. No. No, I don't need a damn thing. <laughs> have any leads on a paying gig? What? Oh, <laughs> why, yes. Uh, Mitch, he owns the last plank. I think his family is in a spot of trouble. And I heard some of the dregs at the end of the dock were looking for help, too. Haven't I helped enough? What? <laughs> Hell, I got no idea why you've done half the things you do. You're done lending a hand. Can't say I blame you one bit. Seriously. Thanks, Teddy. You are the most peculiar main... person I've ever had the occasion to meet. Take this. And, if you're inclined, socialize. It's your party after all. He gives us the Captain's Hat. It's a completely unique tricorn hat that increases the wearer's movement speed by 10%. It grants plus two to ballistic and energy resistance, and best of all, gives us plus two to intelligence. But sadly, it does not accept ballistic weave. It's a great alternative to the tricorn hat, worn by John Hancock, which only grants plus one to charisma, the pirate hat, which we'll talk about later, which also only grants plus one to charisma, and the Miniman General's hat, which also only grants plus one to charisma. That makes this the best tricorn hat in the entire game. As a reward, we also get the Captain's Feast. This is a unique consumable item, the only one of its kind in the game. We don't find it anywhere else, and we can't make it. The Captain's Feast just looks like a huge steak. Looks amazing. Now I'm hungry. And it grants us a plus 10% experience gain for two hours. So probably good to use now while we're completing quests here in Far Harbor. Or maybe we can use it just before turning in a bunch of quests later. So Teddy says that Mitch at the last plank may have more work for us. But Avery said there were other people who may have some work for us. Heading back to Avery. You know of anyone that could use some help? Maybe ask Mitch at the last plank. Some people at the end of the docks might need help too. Everyone calls them the dregs. So, we can go talk to Mitch, we can check in with the dregs, or we can talk with Cassie Dalton. Looks like there's still a lot to do. We'll pick up right here where we leave off and continue to help the people of Far Harbor 
in my next episode. I publish many videos each and every week, so if you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you still think you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop. Things live in the fog. What better way to celebrate the survivors of the fog than with this brand new shirt that comes in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes and in a wide array of colors. You can also find it on other items as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and Patreon patrons are becoming ever more important as YouTube continues to make changes to their platform and other things happen that are outside of my control. So an extra special thanks to all of my YouTube members and my supporters on Patreon. I couldn't do this without you. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.